All right guys, so last video we were doing the, the two wire control. Let's move over to the three wire control. Three wire control is going to make use of a stop start station. So we're gonna make use of uh, one of these guys right here. And we're gonna be able to turn the motor on and when we hit the, the start button, the motor should stay on until we hit the stop button. Okay, so let's build up this three wire on the, the whiteboard here. So what we need to do is we'll draw in our two lines, right? So there's our power there. And from the previous video, we found that the supply voltage for this contactor was 208 volts AC. And for this guy, instead of putting in uh, that limit switch, we're gonna use a stop start station. So what we need to do is we need to throw in our stop switch first. Stop switch is a normally closed switch. Okay, and then after our stop switch, we're then gonna to go to a normally open start switch. From there, we're gonna to go to the coil of our contactor. And then to protect our motor, we're gonna throw in an overload as well. Now, some people like to put the overload here. Others like to put the overload here. Uh, most of the textbooks so far show that the overload is over here, but again, it's a series circuit, so it really doesn't matter whether we have this here or this here. I believe there's a new CSA uh, rule that the overload should be here, so that if there's an overload state, then everything is tripped. But for us, uh, we're gonna continue on with the way that the textbooks are showing with the overload after the actual coil. Okay, so, so far this is just a two wire control. Let me show you um, how this guy is actually wired up on the board here. All right guys, so let's walk through the wiring here. It looks like uh, line one is gonna come down and then feed the normally closed of my stop. And then from the stop, I'm then gonna go to the normally open push button for my start. You'll notice that the incoming wire is coming on the left and going out on the right. In on the left, out on the right. So my wiring is gonna be matching with my ladder dragger. Makes it a lot easier later on for troubleshooting purposes. So line one is gonna go to the stop. So let's take a look inside of the starter now. So we'll come on over. Okay, there's my starter right here. Again, for our trainers, what we do is we take all of the terminals here uh, on the actual starter, we bring them out to terminal blocks so that if you guys smoke a terminal here, we can easily replace a terminal block uh, rather than replacing an entire starter. So from here, I'm gonna bring line one. There's line one right there. And that is gonna come out to a terminal here and that wire goes down and feeds over towards the normally closed of my stop. You can see that I've tried to keep my wiring as clean as possible. Um, by keeping the wiring nice and clean, you, you provide a professional manner. Uh, your instructor is going to come by, they're going to say, this person taking a lot of time to, to make sure this is nice and clean. And if you have any issues with troubleshooting, it's a lot easier to troubleshoot something that's nicely, cleanly wired, rather than something where you have wires going all over the map. So again, that conductor there from line one is going out, and it should come over to the normally closed push button. So my normally closed push button is over here. Let me just span, pan up here. So my stop push button is right here. I've got my stop and my start. And then if we take a look at the actual stop push button, you'll notice that on the push button, there is both a normally open and a normally closed contact. Okay, you might just be able to make out that on the bottom here, this is the normally open contact. And on the top, the conductors that we've color coded red, that is the normally closed contact. So when you press this push button, you're gonna change the state of both of those contacts. Okay, so normally open here, normally closed here. So I'm gonna come into the normally closed of my stop push button. So you can see that, just pan down, I've got a conductor that comes over and the incoming wire is coming in on the left hand terminal. Okay, that's my normally closed for my stop. Then from my normally closed of my stop, I'm coming over to the normally open of my start. Again, in the left, out on the right. Makes it a lot easier for troubleshooting later on um, and for taking meter measurements. You know which is your incoming wire and which is your outgoing wire as well. Now, in the pipe, you can see that I've only got two wires so far. So I haven't put my holding contact in. So this should mimic the exact same as our two wire control with the limit switch. Let's see how that works and then we'll drop in our holding contact. All right, so let's close up the, the starter. We'll turn this guy on. Okay, so now we're energized 
And now if we hit the start push button, it turns on the motor. Remember this is a two wire control. Right now I only have two wires in the pipe here. So once I let go of that switch, it just comes to a stop. So pressing it turns it on, letting it go turns it off. But the three wire provides us with that maintaining contact. Right? If I hit the, the stop push button, it's still going to stop the motor. But the problem with this circuit so far is that if I let go of the, the start push button, then it's not maintained. Okay, so what we need to do is we make got to make use of the normally open contact for our holding contact, and then by pressing this green button, the motor should stay on until we hit the stop push button. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so where do you find that holding contact? Well, there's a normally open contact, and if you've missed the, the previous video on how to test out all the components on this NEMA starter, uh, I'll link it uh, right here, the box right here you can click on. But this one right here is the normally open contact. Okay, so we're gonna make use of this guy, and that's gonna be our holding contact to keep this coil energized as soon as we hit our start push button. Okay, so for, to figure out which terminal corresponds to that, we can take a meter here uh, and we can test out to that terminal. We can see that we have continuity between my normally open and that terminal. So I've now taken a wire from that terminal and brought it down and I'm going to bring that over to uh, in parallel with my start push button. But again, once you've done uh, and figured out all of your terminals here, then just do a quick little diagram and keep track of where each of your terminals are. You can see here that I've already got some jumpers in there and the jumpers are there for uh, my coil. I've got my A2 here for my coil going through the normally closed and from the normally closed I already have it going back to line two. You're going to do a number of projects on this one starter so just leave that in place. You're always going to have the return from the motor going through the overload and back to uh, our line two. So keep those jumpers in place and it'll help you to get through the projects faster. So this wire right here from the normally open we need to have that going in parallel with our start push button. Okay, so that wire that we're just putting in there, that's going to be this wire right here. It's going to come in parallel with the start push button. I'm going to go to the normally open contact, and that normally open contact corresponds with this coil right here. So I'm going to put an M as well. So let's put that wire in. So that conductor is going to be this guy right here. So this conductor has come up, and I've put it to the left-hand terminal of my normally open on my start push button, right? Because everything coming in is on the left hand side. And if we take a look at our diagram that we're working off of here, uh, that conductor is supposed to go into the left hand terminal of the normally open start push button. Excellent. Okay, so let's take a look at how this guy works now that that conductor is into the circuit. So we'll pan back out here. So now that that guy is into the circuit, then we should have a holding contact in there, right? So we'll hit this, turns the motor on, uh, but then the motor should stay on, but doesn't. It? So what the heck's going on? We must be missing a wire, right? Because we're like that guy was supposed to be able to provide us with that holding contact, but it just isn't working yet. So. Right now we do have the three conductors, one, two, three conductors in the pipe, but we're missing that last jumper that goes from the, the start push button over to the coil. So let's take a look at that and we'll throw that in there and see how it provides us with three wire control. So again, inside the pipe you can see that we have one, two, three wires, right? It's supposed to be three wire control. Well, we have the appropriate three wires in the pipe but the last thing that we're missing there is this jumper going from there to the start push button. Or is it going to the start push button? Why do we need to bring another wire out in the field, right? If we take a look and drop this guy into the circuit here, I could go to the other side of the start push button here, but I could also go to this side of my coil. And this and this are in the same enclosure. So why would I bring another wire way out in the field which would give me four wires in the pipe, and this is supposed to be three wires. Why don't I just do a six to eight inch jumper from this normally open contact over to A1 of the coil. So let's do that. The other thing that you can keep in mind is um, if this is screwing you up, then redraw your circuit like this. And 
at that point, when you didn't have that holding contact kicking in, you could at a glance see that um, this is supposed to have two wires and actually the way that we're going to wire it is that this guy is going to actually come up here and go to the coil there. So at a glance we can take a look at this terminal here and say alright there's supposed to be two wires here, one wire here, one wire here, one wire here. There should be two wires on our A1 for the coil. So let's do that. Let's bring this jumper back in. But changing your diagram like this to match with the way that you're actually going to wire it may help you because this doesn't exactly show you the exact way that you're going to wire that guy up, right? By putting this jumper here and this jumper here, right? Looking at this, it would seem that you would bring that wire over to the start, but in actuality, it's a lot easier to just put a 68 inch jumper over to that coil. Let's take a look at that. So on our starter here, uh, we've picked up one of the terminals here on our normally open. Let's just pan up here so we can see that normally open contact. We picked up one of these terminals here, right? So all we really need to do is bring the other side of this contact, this normally open contact, and bring it over to A1 of our coil. So you can see that in reality, it's just like a six or eight inch jumper that's gonna come over like this and pick up the coil. Okay, so similar to that jumper that goes from here to here, I've just put a jumper right here on my terminals from the normally open over to the A1 of the coil. The A2 is going down to the overload, so the normally closed contact on the overload, and then from the overload I'm going back to line two. Uh, again, because the voltage on my starter here is 208 volts. So I need to provide it with 208 volts in order for it to actually pull in. Okay, so now that we've placed that final jumper in there, and put the normally open contact in parallel with our start push button. We still have three wires in the pipe. You can see here that I have one, two, three wires in the pipe. So I have not increased the number of wires going out to the field. I've just put that jumper between the normally open and the coil. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this on with the, the disconnect open. When you're doing your shop projects, the disconnect should be closed. I'm just gonna keep this open so you can see the actual contactor pulling in and pulling out. But I've got the appropriate PPE, meaning that I've got my glasses on in case anything flashes. So we've got this on now. Okay, so the entire starter is energized now. If I hit the start push button, you can see that the contactor pulls in. When I let go of the start push button, Nice, it stays held in. Okay, will keep held in until I hit the start, the stop push button. Okay, as soon as I hit that stop push button, it breaks contact or breaks current to this coil right here. Okay, so again, hit the push button for the start, keeps running. If I hit the push button for the stop, then it comes to a stop. Let's pan out and see the motor actually running. All right guys, so uh, disconnect is on. Yours is usually closed, so yours should be like this whenever you're working on your projects. Uh, I'm working on this live just so we can see the actual contactor pulling in. There is a tab right here where I can press down. That is where this portion of the starter clicks in there and make sure that you actually have the, this closed. Okay, I'm wearing my glasses in case there is a flash. Uh, and so here we can see that when I hit the start, it turns on, you can see the motor running. If I hit the stop, it comes to a stop. If I'm pressing this stop push button, there's no way the current can get to that coil. As soon as I let go of the stop, that allows the current to flow over to the start push button. I can press that start push button. That allows that voltage to move over to the coil and now it's running fine. Okay, let's trip the overload and see how that kicks out the actual motor. Okay, so the motor is running and I'm gonna trip the overload. I don't want you to do this in class, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So we're gonna trip the overload and you can see that that brings this guy to a stop there. Okay, so as soon as we've tripped the overload, then the normally closed contact in the bottom opens up and stops current going to this coil. I'm gonna leave it for a while, right? In actuality, when you reset the overload, then this is always closed 
I would press this and reset that overload, okay? For our trainers, it doesn't seem like that is making contact with this, but in a, uh, a standard starter, this portion right here should be able to push down on that, and as soon as that goes in, then I should be able to restart the motor. Okay, so turn this guy on, and now that I've reset my overloads, now it's running fine. Excellent. All right guys, so that basically covers the uh, the three wire. I'm gonna tack on one more video here to look at the voltages on each of the components. Like what's the voltage across the saw? What's the voltage across the start? What's the voltage across that normally open contact? And what's the voltage across that coil when it's in the rest state and then when you've actually energized it? I think one of the things that we need to do is really center in on taking meter measurements of our voltage and that will really help us with our troubleshooting so we don't have to rip everything out and rewire it. But I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.